two ever played better third base than these two. One of them already the great legend, and the other looking to get there. And looking to get there with the same kind of plays. Brooksy and Manny. Last night, one got to watch the other, and maybe someday, maybe. It's the Orioles on Masson, and this four-game series will come to a conclusion here at Camden Yards tonight and a chance for the Orioles to even it up with a win against the Texas Rangers. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and a welcome for the Orioles with a victory in the ballgame last night. They reached the 50-win mark, first time since 1997 that the Orioles have done that before the All-Star game. And they did it in Game 3 of what used to be an anomaly, four-game series. They aren't anymore. Take a look at how the Orioles have done in four-game series this season. They split with the Indians. They took three against Boston, split with Toronto, took three against the Angels, and took three against the A's. That's not bad. 13 and 7 record in these four game series. That is fifth best in the major leagues. And when they played Washington on the two and two, they also took three out of four in those games. So the four game series, we're seeing more of that, Mike Bordick, than ever. Yeah, we really are. Obviously, the uh, unbalanced schedule, you know, players are running into this. Now, Major League Baseball, obviously, putting the four game series in, have created like roadblocks for these players. They're so used to the routine of three game series. You have to be mentally tough. It's a grind to get through a season and anyway, then when you put four game series in there, they're tough and it just shows what the Orioles are all about. They take it one game at a time. They're very resilient and they've had great success in four game series. That's a great credit to the ball club and they'll try and do the same thing here against Texas. Try and even it up at 2-2 with a victory here in game four tonight. Bank for the achiever in you. Texas in town and the fans have shown up here at the yard and tonight for game four our train game time temperature will be 87 degrees overcast skies very light wind humidity at 55 train celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Take a look at the Rangers starting lineup. Kinsler, Andrus, and Cruz. Beltre, Pierzynski, and Moreland. Profire, Murphy, and Martin. For A.J. Pierzynski, a D.H. and catcher in this series. There are the numbers. 
Now let's take a look at the scouting report tonight from Miguel Gonzalez. Quality and quantity. Six straight quality starts from Miguel going 4-1 and one with a 2.68. And, hey, he's averaging six and two-thirds innings pitched in those starts in and out. That's the key. Miguel is at his best when he's able to locate his fastball on both sides of the plate, much like Wei-Yin Chen did last night. And, of course, that'll help his secondary pitches play up. And he is rolling at home 4-0 and oh this season at Camden Yards. And the Orioles are under defeated in his seven home starts. This will be his 16th start of the season. 3.63 earned run average. 72 punch outs. 236 opponent average. Lefties hitting just 220. Righties at 253. He will bring an 0-1 mark in against the Texas Rangers in the game four of this series. And Ian Kinsler will take the first pitch as he's done in the last 9,820 at bats. And Kensler with a four for 13 and four RBIs in the series, hitting a 287. The delivery to it, and that will be swung on and missed. For Gonzalez against the Rangers, the only start August of 2012 in Arlington. He was tagged with a loss, allowing uh, four runs, five hits, eight innings, three walks. Not a bad outing. Just a tough ball game that he was on the losing side of. One ball, one strike delivery to Kensler. He'll foul it away. Ron Washington's ball club at 53 and 38 a win and they finally after a lot of days trailing by a half game would get to the top of their division for the Orioles 50 and 42 and looking to keep ground as uh, American League Eastern teams all played this afternoon we will update you on those as we go along ball put up in the air and that's going to end up in the seats <laughs> Chris Davis. He was just practicing down there with Brian O'Nora. He reached into the crowd with his glove and came up on one foot. The ball <laughs> was about 900 feet away from him. So he may have a sinus problem, but apparently his humor is still there. And he got no call from O'Nora, the umpire. Here's the 1 2 delivery on the way and it grounded down to third. Manny Machado. Hey, let's take a look at the Orioles defense behind Miguel Gonzalez tonight. Nate McLeod, Adam Jones, and Nick Markakis in that Orioles outfield. Hardy and Roberts up the middle. Manny Machado and Chris Davis on the corners with Matt Wieters once again behind the plate. And that will bring up Elvis Andrus. Andrus, the shortstop, four for ten with an RBI in the series. These two teams, their offenses have done a pretty good job here in the, these games. The Orioles' Chen finally shutting down Texas in the ball game last night. And now Gonzalez will try and do the same thing here. There is Wei and Chen. Magnificent performance. He, he was just outstanding and clearly is going to make a big difference for the Orioles in the second half of the season if he can stay healthy. 0-1 delivery to Andrus, and that's chop foul. Ron Washington after the ball game last night, the Texas manager about Chen. You got to give him credit. He may not have pitched in a while, which he hadn't, but he certainly didn't look like it out there tonight. Yeah, he was on top of his game indeed. I mean, great location with his fastball, and I really think that extra rehab start in Double A Bowie really helped polish him off and get him prepared at this uh, more competitive level. 0-2 delivery on the way to Andrus, and that was, as we mentioned last night, because Buck Showalter, coaching staff, both there and here, even though Chen didn't want to make that start, he wanted to get back. They said, nope, you're going to make one more. And I agree with you, Mike. I think it really helped him. 1-2 yeah. delivery on the way, and that'll be bounced on Andrus and a two-ball, two-strike count. Well, Wei and Chen proved once again about the importance of being able to locate your fastball. I mean, he was masterful. There's a look at him. He was uh, dotting it inside and outside to both lefties and righties. Really helped set up his secondary pitches. Two ball, two strike count on Andrus. Cruz waiting on deck. And he got him. And after one high and away, and Gonzalez gets his strikeout to away. 
take a look at this pitch from Miguel Gonzalez. Just a fastball up and out of the zone. And when you can throw it for strikes consistently, you're going to get some chases. He did right there. Take a look at what Miguel Gonzalez has been using uh, for his pitches in his last start. And Mercedes inside the numbers tells you he's been mixing up his off-speed pitches pretty consistently. And obviously, the effect is shown on his fastball. He's throwing it 61% of the time. Just a 156 batting average off his fastball. Very impressive over the last half dozen starts for him. Cruz at the plate, 1 0 delivery to him. Nelson Cruz comes in with the six game hit streak, four for 13 in this series with an RBI. He's one for two lifetime off Gonzalez, trying for a clean inning here to start the ball game out. First innings have been a bit of a problem for Miguel Gonzalez. He's given up seven runs. In the first innings of ball games this season, not unusual for starting pitchers, but we'd love to have this one go in a hurry. He also had a career high in walks in his last outing, with five base on balls in the ball game against the Yankees in his last outing. So he wants to cut that down. Broken back ground ball to short. Hardy is there, and it is a one-two-three inning. So Gonzalez kicks it off, retiring the Rangers in order. And we'll check the Orioles lineup when we come back. Game as we said, good crowds have been on hand here, and another good house tonight. And they're just getting into their seats as we go to the bottom of the first. McLeod Machado and Marquegas, Jones Davis and Weeders, Hardy Roberts and Rymold, Manny Machado, big numbers in this series. And here is the scouting report for Ross Wolf tonight. It is an emergency start with you, Darvish, placed on the DL. The Rangers once again looking to their bullpen. And they asked Ross Wolf to step up. He's a contact pitcher. He's averaging under two strikeouts per nine innings. Does it with a three pitch mix. He has great control of his two seamer. Gets a lot of ground balls as a slider and a change to go along with it. This is his second major league start. Here's a look at his numbers. 12 games, just the one start. He was called up back on May 22nd. A nice low earned run average, though, 1.95. Nate McLeod, three game hit streak to lead it off, takes a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. There is uh, Nate with a four for 11 in the series for the Orioles, hitting at 283. So on consecutive nights, Ron Washington's had to go to his bullpen for spot starters. Four of their five starters are down. And that's, that's tough for any ball club. This Texas team hoping that Wolf can give them some innings. A 30 year old who spent time in the Orioles organization. Played to Moreland. Moreland would go to the bag himself. And the class retired. That'll bring up Manny Machado. Manny coming up. Take a look. The most hits before the All Star break. Players 23 or younger. Albert Pujols, you see. Was uh, 23 in 180 days when he had 128. Manny's got 126. Tommy Davis 
126. And Bobby Tolan, who played with Cincinnati 1969, 125. Brett and Kaline round out that top five. So Manny Machado, yet another statistic in which he is uh, near the top. And in fact, if you take a look at the hits before the All Star break by the youngest players, he's it. He has broken Tommy Davis's record of 126 set back in 1962 by Tommy Davis of the Dodgers easily breaking it as the youngest player in the majors to have 125 hits before the All Star break. One ball one strike count. That ball to right field slicing to Cruz. He's got it. Two down here in the first inning. Take a look at the Rangers defense tonight behind Wolf, Murphy, Martin, Cruz in the outfield. Andrews at shortstop. Profar moving over to second base. He's played short left and now second base for the Rangers. Beltre at third, Moreland over at first, and the veteran A.J. Perzinski behind the plate. And here's Nick Marquegas. Two down, nobody on. Marquegas, couple of hits in 13 at bats in the series. Nick now with a 288 mark. He has picked up 18 doubles on the year. 30 year old Wolf with a 1 0 count on Nick Marquegas. Wolf's first start was a good one against Oakland. Came this year. He worked uh, five innings, gave up just one run on three hits, won the ball game against Oakland by a score of 3 to 1. And then, as we said, all of his other work has come out of the bullpen. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. The Orioles know a good deal about him. He signed with Texas as a minor league free agent after 2012 season started with Baltimore. Two different seasons and uh, one full campaign with Triple A Norfolk. One two delivery that'll be put in the air center field right at Martin he's got it. So both pitchers start out retiring the side in order. We'll go to the second inning and get to see one of the league's hottest hitters Beltre coming up. Forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. Brought to you by Miller Light. Orioles trying to get a series evened up here. Texas has been a very tough team on the Orioles. The Orioles have won only two of the last ten series that have been played against Texas. So for Buck Showalter's team here in this four game set, come out with a split, get a couple of wins on the board back to back with Toronto coming in for those big division games and uh, Ron Washington's ball club will remain on the road going into the all star break. Miguel Gonzalez he will face Beltre even though the Orioles have known he's the one you don't want to beat you for Beltre in this series just pound him out seven for eleven two home runs six RBIs and three runs scored Beltre with a 12 game hit streak. 
And puts the first one up in the air against the shift. A long run for Davis and Marcakis, but no play. Well, Beltre is an aggressive hitter. I mean, you get it close to the zone, and he is hacking. Ron Washington talked about Beltre, and he said, you know, he's really what makes this offense click. When he's going good, everybody else in the lineup seems to kind of relax and just play their game. And right now, Beltre is swinging it, and we've seen the potential this uh, Rangers offense has first two games. Boy, they were uh, looking solid. Well, one delivery will come inside to it. Beltre, the 12 game hit streak's the longest going right now in the majors to Kobe Ellsbury. An 18 game hit streak coming into today's game. The Red Sox is still playing against Seattle. They're tied at 7 uh, 7 in the ballgame. 1 1 delivery will be taken outside. And the count goes to 2 and 1. Beltre has faced Gonzalez only three times. 1 for 3 off the Orioles right hander. Shift is on in the infield, playing the right hander to pull. Outfield pretty much straight away. 2 1 delivery to him, puts it up in the air. Center field, Jones. And Adam will put it away for the up. Take a look at our AT&T mobility trivia facts. Yeah, Miguel Gonzalez has 21 straight starts with five and a third plus innings pitch. That's the third longest active streak in Major League Baseball. And, you know, just when the Orioles need a starter to get a little deeper in ball games, Miguel Gonzalez certainly had stepped up in Wei and Chen's absence, and he has been pitching great for the Orioles. Gonzalez as a starter with the Orioles is now 15 and 7. This is his 31st start as an Oriole pitcher. And he faces Pierzynski. AJ with a four game hit streak going with a five for 12 in this series. Couple of RBIs. Pierzynski hitting a 281. He's back behind the dish for the ball game tonight. He has DH'd as well. And he'll put that one up in the air to left field. McClough. Nate the skate puts it away, and there are two down. Well, this is what you like to see, and Mercedes inside the numbers shows the consistent improvement in opponent batting average against Miguel Gonzalez back in April, 275, and down it goes to a very impressive 182 in the month of July, and it's all about command. And Miguel Gonzalez is able to locate his fastball. His split finger is filthy. He gets a lot of outs, swing and misses on that split finger fastball. He's got two down here with nobody on, and Mitch Moreland coming up. Moreland's had only one hit in the series, the one for eight, struggling at the plate right now. He's only had four hits in his last 34 at bats, covering 11 games. So his average has dipped down to the 258 mark. He's up with nobody on and two away. 29 year old Miguel Gonzalez. Ahead on the counter, 0 and 1 infield modified shift playing him to pull. The 0 1 delivery will be taken inside. Got up to 93 on that one. Yeah, his fastball velocity has been uh, very consistent all year in the low 90s, sometimes humping it up there into the mid 90s. That one, like you said, at 93. One ball, one strikeout. Moreland. Texas making roster changes today. You Darvish was put on the DL, the all star pitcher with a trapezius problem. Josh Lindblom, who gave it for the club last night, sent down to Triple A. They've called up left hander Joseph Ortiz and right hander Wilmer Font. They are both available tonight to help out. Obviously, a little short on pitching right now for Texas. 2 1 delivery on the way. That'll get a second off the glove of Roberts, played by Hardy, but he can't get it there. And. Uh, I would think base hit. Yeah, that was a bullet right at Brian Roberts ankles. Really not much time to react. Just a glove reaction there. A lot of times you'll see infielders if they have the time, they'll take a quick drop step to create a little bit of an angle. But that ball was hit so hard. Brian couldn't even move his feet. So a single for Moreland first hit of the ball game comes with two down and it will bring a pro fire to the plate. Here's a 20 year old who's wondering, do you really love me or why don't you like me at all? Seven ball games, five different positions. Two at short, two in left, two at second, one DH and one at third. And he's only 20. 
He's a shortstop, I we think, by trade. He's probably beginning to wonder. He's only had one hit and eight at bats in the series and has struggled. He's eight for his last 50 over the last 16 games. He was hitting 292. It's down to 238. 1 0 count. And Profire will take it up high. Well, one, of the, one of the benefits, and I guess we talked about this a little bit last night, is when you have such a versatile young player, you can spell some of your everyday players. And I, and I think that is really what the Rangers are trying to do here stay strong so that they'll be there at the end of the season. Well, Profire learns four or five new different <laughs> <Yeah>. positions. <laughs> 2 0 delivery time, and that ball put up in the air. Andy Machado. And no play. Two ball, one strike count. Summer night under overcast skies here at Camden Yards tonight. Orioles and Texas meeting for the first time this year in this four game set right after the All Star break. The Orioles will return the favor and be heading. Down to Texas for three games. Two one delivery on the way, and that's foul back. As a result of Darvish going on the DL, the Orioles are going to miss him this year in all likelihood. He's not scheduled to come back until the Yankee series, which will follow the Orioles series in Texas. The Yankees can get it, and the Orioles will not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think the Orioles offense minds that one no. bit. Two ball, two strike count. Darvish was replaced on the All Star team by Matt Moore from Tampa Bay today. 2 2 delivery, and that'll be taken inside. And a three ball, two strike count on Profire. So Moreland will be going at first base. Erickson Profire, 3 2 2 down. Davis will move behind the runner. And Gonzalez with a 3 2 delivery, and that'll be fouled off. So far, way out in front of that one. Well, Miguel Gonzalez has great confidence in that split finger, and he uses it in a 3 2 count right there. Profar saw a lot of fastballs, and now he's going to be aware of that off speed pitch. Well, Gonzalez showing that he's fearless with his command, throwing it in a tough count. See the 11 home starts with that uh, 7 0 mark. 4 0 this year. 3 2 delivery. Runner going again. Ground ball again to second base. Roberts on this one. Makes the play. And that will retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. And one left on base. Jones Davis Wheaters coming up. Nope. Frank, you've won 500 for being selected. You get 100 more for every Orioles hit during the game and an extra 500 for any Orioles home run in the fifth inning. 
For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery, hit a big contestant of the game. Play five-card cash. Go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles to enter. Leaving us all wondering, what is Frank's middle name? Orioles bat here. Jones, Davis, and Weeders. 30-year-old Ross Wolf. He's only worked 27 and two-thirds innings this year, and in his career, only 52 and two-thirds innings. And prior to this, everything out of the bullpen but one game this year. Jones will take the pitch up high for a ball. Adam a four for 13 in the series, hitting at 290, tied for fourth in runs, sixth in the league in hits with 111, and eighth in RBIs. And heading to the All Star game. Foul back. You talk about Ross Wolf and just the limited amount of time, obviously, he's thrown in the big leagues. But when he came up and made that spot start on May 22nd, manager Ron Washington really liked what he had seen, and they needed some depth in the bullpen. So they really became him uh, or made him the long relief guy out of there. And he did a really good job. I mean, we saw his low earned run average. Down under two. So he's been very effective, and that's why Ron Washington didn't hesitate to make him mm. the starter in this game. That'll be his first strikeout. Largely a question of stamina for him tonight. Yeah. We'll take a look at the Nissan pitch track, and this pitch just takes off, starts off on the inner third, and this two seamer runs about a foot underneath the hands of Adam Jones. And he can't get to that one. Told you Ross was in the Orioles organization. He pitched for Norfolk 2009. He went four and two, 47 games as a reliever, had a 3.95 ERA, and then in 2010 he got in 25 games, went 0 and two, but he had a 1.88 ERA, and then uh, he was moved, and that finished his time in the Orioles organization. He pitched pretty well. Yeah. Pretty good numbers for the Orioles. Signed as a free agent 2012 by Texas. Chris Davis. Davis with the 0 for 17 coming into the ball game, including the 0 for 10 in this series. He's just looking for anything just to get out of it and uh, move on. Talking about a sinus infection he's had for a few days before the ball game today. Not feeling 100%. And you could tell a little reluctant to even talk about it because he followed it up by saying, look, I, this is no excuse. I'm playing. I may have a sinus infection, but I'm still playing and I'm all right. And I should be putting some numbers up on the board. Well, everyday players go through that. And he does. Way back in right field. Will it go? Goodbye. Home run. A major league leading number 34. the sinus infection feel a whole lot better. <laughs> Certainly make the Orioles clubhouse feel a lot better too to see Chris Davis's back come back to life. And uh, he got that one and he's got a new career high in homers. And that'll be taken by Weaver. Well Chris Davis hasn't had many pitches to hit in the zone and this mistake stays out over the plate and he hammers it. Another deep drive. And that pitch will be taken inside. So Chris Davis coming away with the blow that puts the Orioles on top. Matt Weeders, two for 12. He's had a homer in this series. And the Orioles on their first hit of the ball game have the lead. And that pitch is taken for a strike. There is Chris who's been wanting some numbers against his former team. He's only had three hits in 28 at bats against Texas. And that is the first home run against the organization that he formerly played for. Waiters will go down swinging. A couple of strikeouts for Wolf. Two down in the inning. Well, Wolf has some pretty good offerings, and you see the dip on this changeup down and in to Matt Waiters. Pretty good late life on that. Obviously, took some speed off. He's been throwing his fastball 
in the low 90s that one down in the low 80s. Davis still being chased by Cabrera Cabrera got his 30th home run today in a one for three performance for the Tigers they lost to the White Sox 6 3 today. Here's J.J. Hardy Hardy three for ten couple of RBI's by the way that is the first home surrender first homer surrendered by Wolf in the 28 innings that he has pitched this season and Davis back to watch one ball one strike count hit hard right field warning track at the wall and room and Cruz pulls it in. So Hardy gave it a ride. But for the Orioles, it's their leader, Chris Davis, and the major league leader. 34 home runs now on the season, giving the Orioles the 1 0 lead. Magazine is going to have a tribute for heroes. There'll be one representing each team. For the Orioles, it is Rob Jones, who's from Charlottesville, Virginia. United States Marine, a member of a combat engineer crew, lost both legs in Afghanistan in 2010. He got the prosthetics, decided he needed to do something, so he started rolling, rowing. He and his partner won a medal in Britain 2012 Paralympics. He's now planning to cycle across the U.S. for charity in the fall. He was awarded the Purple Heart, honorably discharged 2011. He will be the representative for the Orioles at the All-Star Game next week in the tribute to heroes. And we will be looking for him, and you can do the same when you watch the All-Star Game festivities which uh, will be centered around recognizing the veterans of the U.S. Armed Services at City Field in New York. David Murphy leading it off here and a 2-0 count. Murphy with a 2 for 9 in the series. Infield moves a little playing him to pull. He does. And hard. Two ball one strike count. Well, we've seen that a lot or saw that a lot last night off Wei and Chen. The ability to throw that fastball inside to both lefties and righties. A lot of balls get pulled foul. And Miguel Gonzalez is one that can consistently get in there. Murphy Martin, top of the order due up here. That'll go the other way. And McCloutry's straight up and he's got it. Oriole fans, how would you like to win a hitting lesson with Adam Jones? We're not kidding. You sign up at Masson's Touch Em All Rewards to follow, share, and score great prizes. Go to MassonSports.com to sign up. Being social has its rewards. <laughs> Perfectly timed, wouldn't you say? Here's Martin. Leonis Martin, a one for six, playing in center field in this game. Speedster, showed bunt. Already had Manny Machado in at third base. Martinez hitting a 292, real solid average in and out of the lineup. He's been on base 20 of the last 22 games. Fastball by Gonzalez will be inside to him. 
Yeah, you have that kind of speed. Certainly showing bunt can shorten up an infield. Manny Machado weighing in on the grass at third base, but even the rest of the infielders have to be aware of that and contend with the possibility of a bunt. No bunt shot on that one. And the big cut will make it a ball and two strikes. We'll take a look at the Nissan pitch track here. Big breaking ball at the top of the zone. Miguel Gonzalez, you know, when he, he doesn't go to them a lot, but he does it enough just to keep hitters off balance. And the one two delivery on the way to Martin, and that's that. Two strikeouts for Gonzalez. Two down here in the third. And that is the effect of that breaking ball. I mean, this 93 mile an hour fastball, probably about 100 in Martin's eyes, and great location. Matt Wieters doesn't even move his glove. Nissan pitch track showing it right there, right on the inner third. Two starts ago. Nine strikeouts picked up by Gonzalez. Career high for him. Started with a couple here in this one. Two down, nobody on. Kensler top of the order, grounded out. He's the DH in the ball game tonight. With Profire getting the start at second base. Kensler uh, one for two in the only times he has faced Gonzalez. Oh, one delivery to him, and that will miss outside for a ball. Ian Kensler, among the most difficult to strike out, he came into this series the most difficult. He's now the second most difficult batter in the American League to fan. One one delivery to him, and Kensler will put it up in the air, left field. McLeod, plenty of time to get over towards the line. He'll put it away. And Gonzalez, who has been a fly ball pitcher, 59% of his outs on fly balls, doing that again in this game. Orioles up. He's coming back in game three to win last night six to one. Brian Roberts spoke of the importance of it. I don't know that it was a do or die night, but when you're playing somebody who's up in the standings, it's never too early to look beyond that. When you're playing head to head, you need to get wins against teams that are right there with you or ahead of you. So I think tonight, speaking of last night, was important. Texas, of course, one of those teams. They have won 53 games, the Orioles 50 on the year. Brian Roberts leading it off here. Roberts to be followed by Reimold and then McClouth. Two for ten. Three RBIs, couple of runs scored. Brian Roberts starting to get some at bats under his belt now. 43 so far. And Brian puts that one in the air to right field. Going back, Cruz at the wall. And goodbye, home run. Almost the same spot where he was denied a home run last night. When it went off Beltre's glove in center, not this time. And the Orioles have a 2 0 lead. The Orioles.
Royals keep pounding out those home runs. 125th this season. That leads all of Major League Baseball. And Brian Roberts getting in in that hit parade. Two home runs, seven RBIs for him. We'll take a look at the swing here. Wolf misses his spot. This ball stays on that inner third, and Brian Roberts gets to it in a hurry. He hammered that one. And Wolf, who came in having not surrendered a homer, has given up two. Yeah, I see the reaction right there. Oh, a little frustrated about missing his spot. Rimo got one uh, last night. He came uh, came on with his fifth home run, three RBI homer in the big uh, fourth inning for the Orioles. Davis has got one tonight, along with Roberts. One, two delivery. Rimo to short. Andrus will make the play, and Reimold is retired. Tomorrow, a Birdland favorite returns. The first 20,000 fans, 21 and over, get the 83 World Series 30th anniversary floppy hat presented by Miller Light. After the game, there'll be a great fireworks display, and uh, that'll light up downtown for you after the Orioles try and do the same against Toronto. For tickets, 888 for a bird to go to Orioles.com tomorrow. Here's Nate McLeod. And a strike taken. McLeod grounded out his first time up. We'll go through all the scores of the other teams in the American League East as soon as Boston finishes up their game there in extra innings against Seattle. It's going to go to short. Held in by Andrus. McLeod has retired two down. Andrus, he's always smiling out there. Him and Beltre got a thing going. I think he was. Uh, Impressive how high he got. <laughs> you can see him saying, "Oh yeah, he got way up there." Turned but, around to watch a replay on the big board. Yeah, and Beltre is over there saying, "No, you didn't. You didn't get up at all." There is Manny Machado. Manny flied out first time up, two down, nobody on. Run in for the Orioles on the homer by Roberts. Machado brings a three-game hit streak in. Hitting at 317 on the year. Fouls it off. He is still first in doubles with 39, second in hits, 126, six in average, and tenth in runs scored. One ball, one strike out. Third. Fair no. Foul ball. Bill Welkie right on the line, third base umpire with a call. Must have been a tough one to call, too, with Beltre right over there, almost making the play on that ball. Of course, Manny wanted another double to add to his collection. Manny on his way back. He could have the cycle in the series if he could get a double. He can't it's ironic. Get a double? He's the one who hasn't <laughs> had the double. He's got the triple. <laughs> right. He had a triple in the ball game last night. He's had a home run and a couple of singles. He hasn't had a double in this four game set. One, two, delivery on the way, and Machado puts it in the air to right field. Nelson Cruz. He's got it. But the Orioles on the leadoff homer in the inning by Brian Roberts extend their lead. Two dingers. Davis, Roberts, Orioles two, Rangers nothing.
Everybody else has played in the American League East. The Rays beat the Twins 4 to 3. Matt Moore is going to replace Darvish at the All Star game. 10 strikeouts, three earned runs, seven and a third. The Rays are just red hot as they have now won eight in a row. The Indians defeated the Blue Jays 4 2. Dickey took the loss. There you see his numbers. He's now 8 and 9 on the year. The Yankees got Jeter back. They won the ball game and then they lost Jeter. The Yankees won it 8 to 4. Jeter had a couple of at bats and then had to come out of the game with quad tightness. That is his first game coming off the DL. And the Red Sox, an extra innings, just defeated the Mariners 8 7 and 10. Now for the go ahead RBI, got the single in the 10th inning. So the Red Sox have won eight of their last 10 three in a row. So Boston, Tampa Bay, New York win, Toronto loses in the East today. Gonzalez will get the pitch in there for a strike. Here is Elvis Andrus, the strikeout victim, his first time up. Oh, one delivery to him, and that'll be put in the air to Marcus. On Saturday, the Orioles host the Jays, a 4:05 afternoon showdown. First 20,000 fans, 15 and over, get the Adam Jones replica road jersey. Back your birds and a big game against the Jays. Have a great day at the yard. Tickets in advance, cheaper. 888-84 Bird to go to Orioles.com. See Miguel's pitch count there at 44. Been very effective, aggressive in the zone. Good location with all of his pitches. Seems to be doing exactly what he wants to do. Nelson Cruz, an all star, grounded out his first time up. One 0 delivery on the way. That'll be put up in the air. Second base. And Roberts has it. Two down. So true to his numbers on the year for Gonzalez. The outs are coming on balls put up in the air. Two down, nobody on. Beltre flight out to center field his first time up. And we'll foul that one right straight back. Ow. He hit his foot harder than he hit the ball. He really <laughs> wanted that pitch and just didn't get it. Yeah, Miguel Gonzalez isn't making many mistakes. I and mean, that really wasn't a terrible pitch, even though it was up in the zone. It was out on that outer third. You see Matt Weeders getting out of there a little bit further. Beltre will foul it off. Beltre is among the leaders in the American League in hits. He's fourth. Our total base is fourth, tied for fourth in hits, fifth in slugging, tied for fifth in multi hit games, sixth in extra base hits, and tied for eighth in home runs. Big season, Adrian Beltre. Here's the 0 2 delivery to him by Gonzalez, a chopper cut off by Machado. And a 1 2 3 inning. That's seven in a row set down, and the three out of the four for Gonzalez have been clean innings.
tables and dining the ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown races. American League team leaders in home runs Baltimore Orioles way up there with 125. Of course I had a couple tonight with Brian Roberts and Chris Davis going deep but the Blue Jays on that list 112 Seattle Mariners 108 Texas Rangers with 108 and the Cleveland Indians 102 home runs on the year. <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> <laughs> Young man dancing to his own tune. I think he's hearing the Sanford Townsend band. Request put in by Mike and I for pregame music today, <laughs> which Woody found and played. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Marikakis fly out to center field his first time up. It'll be Marikakis, Jones, and uh, Davis. Orioles up 2 0 as so you're in the bottom of the fourth. 2 2 and 0 for the Orioles. 0 1 and 0 for Texas. We want to send along our very best wishes to Jeff Datz, former coach of the Orioles, Mariners third base coach, sideline late April. And uh, yesterday talked about something that those who knew him was going on. He is uh, having cancer treatment. And uh, talked about it public yesterday in Seattle. He's done with six weeks of radiation treatment for uh, level two squamous cancer. And it was on the back of his neck and uh, the treatments have gone well for him. He hopes to be back with Seattle after the all star break to be back coaching again. And so we wish wish uh, Jeff Dats all the best. Yeah sure do. What a great guy. Great baseball man. And just a good person. I'm glad to see he's uh, going to be back out on the field. Three ball one strike out on Marquegas. And that's going to be a walk. That'll be the first walk surrendered by Wolf in the ball game. Leadoff man on. When the Orioles win, everyone wins. The Orioles, when they win and score five or more runs, which they did yesterday, it means you get 50% off your regular menu price online order today. Just under promo code Orioles5 at PapaJohns.com when you order. Valid at participating Baltimore area Papa Johns. So you're wondering what you're going to do for dinner because you got home late. There you go. Here's Jones, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Wolf's pitch will be in there for a strike. Robert started it out with a home run in the third. Now a walk to Marqueca, so the Orioles get two leadoff men on here in the ball game. Ross Wolf, primarily a ground ball pitcher, as a reliever. Nasty got him home plate umpire Adrian Johnson calling the swinging strike. Yeah, pretty much the same pitch that Wolf was able to strike Jones out on his first at bat. Another two seamer just takes off under the hands. So the Jones with the 0 2 count on him. Short lead at first, Marikakis. Jones will take that one even further inside and a one ball, two strike count. Now Wolf says, why not try it again? Look over to first. Marquez, though, not extending the lead. One two delivery, and that'll be chopped foul. Orioles will continue the homestand into the All Star break of the weekend series against Toronto. Chris Tillman, Mark Burley make the start in tomorrow night's game to open it up. Saturday, it's a 4 0 5 start. Jason Hamill against Todd Redmond. And then the Sunday afternoon game at 1 30, Scott Feldman and Josh Johnson. Then the All Star break. And then open up for that big charge to the finish. Here's the one two delivery on the way to Jones. That's towards the hole. Backhanded Andrus and gets the out at second. Elvis Andrus with a nice play to get Marcakis. Now take a look at the Orioles then and now comparing numbers through this date or yesterday's if you will games through the 10th. All right last year 45 and 40 at this point. 
course, everybody feeling pretty good here in Birdland about their record at the All-Star break. Their average 240 at that time, 106 home runs. But you look at this year, just incredible improvements. Obviously, the 50 wins, but a 267 batting average. Their offense has led the way. 123 home runs to this point, and they're averaging almost five runs per game at 4.8. I mean, impressive numbers for the Orioles. Great improvements all the way around. And here is Chris Davis. Chris with that 34th home run in the second inning. That gets him out of an 0 for 17 that he had been in. 86 RBIs, new highs in homers, and runs batted in for Chris. Runner on first, Jones. And the pitch taken for strike. Take a look at this home run from Chris Davis. His 34th of the season. That's most in the major leagues, and he admired that one for a minute. Felt good about that swing. Gonzalez leads in the National League with 24 coming into today's play. Chris has got 34. One ball, one strike delivery, infield shift on. And as far as Chris is concerned, we mentioned it the other night. He's chasing Roger Maris's single season home run mark. That's how he views it. With all the others ahead uh, of Maris being involved in performance enhancing drug issues. So Chris said, I'm chasing Roger Maris for a single season mark of 61. Two ball, one strike out. Jones over at first base, drawing some throws and interest as he extended his lead a little bit. Two ball, one strike out. And foul back on a big cut, even for him. Take a look at Chris Davis. Uh, Mercedes inside the number shows us that he has had great improvements. Back in 2011, he hit just 245 off right-handed pitching. He had a great year last year, very solid at 271, but incredible improvements this year to 338. And really, that's all about playing every day, and obviously the experience in the big leagues has helped him. Two ball, two strike, count one away, and the pitch is way up high. He's been one of the best against the right handed pitchers this season. Chris coming in with a 338 batting average against righties, third best in the American League, and he's now hit 26 of his 34 home runs off right handers. So that would be by the book. Again, Jones back. Ross Wolf 3-2. Jones goes. Swing on a miss. And a strike about throw him on double play. No runs, no hits, no errors. Kierzynski is throwing out about 20% of base runners. Gets him on that one. Orioles lead it 2 to nothing.
Four against Texas with a win. Davis contributing with the 34th home run of his this season. That came in the second off Wolf. And the Orioles who have used the long ball all year. Behind Gonzalez used it again. Brian Roberts the first home run at Camden Yards for him since opening day of 2011. Gonzalez has gotten the rest of it done. No walks, couple of strikeouts, and has given up only one hit. And Brian Roberts and Davis providing the long ball. So another well pitched game early. We've seen a number of these of late, even though in this series the runs have been put up. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Pierzynski, Moreland, and Profire. Pierzynski with the fly ball out. Five for 13 now in the series against the Orioles. And a big swing and a miss. Texas is up there in home runs. They had 108. They still have 108. Frank fourth starting today's play in home runs. Gonzalez, the 0 1 delivery. Brzezinski will take it outside. Well, and you mentioned the other night, Dave Magan and their hitting coach said that it's just been kind of unseasonably cooler in Texas when it warms up. You know, those home run numbers are going to start going up for the Rangers. Orioles will hope it stays the unseasonably cool <laughs> in right. Texas after the All Star break. They'll be there for three night games in Texas and then four games in Kansas City as the Orioles will start on the road after the All Star break. 2 1 delivery to Pierzynski and an off speed breaking ball that he couldn't time. 2 and 2. And Pierzynski kind of arguing about that call. It might not have been the spot he wanted to throw it and you see Matt Weider setting up down and away but it indeed catches that inside corner. So a 2 2. And Brzezinski will get on swinging foul tipped it into the mitt. Talking to Adrian Johnson as he leaves the home plate umpire. He's got to catch the game. Take a look at the Verizon Fios Exmo here. Beautiful fastball just blown right by Przinski on that outside corner. Great pitch once again. Remember Verizon Fios making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet. That's powerful. And Adrian Johnson, unplayed um umpire, just turned over there and put the palm of his hand up towards the dugout of Texas, saying, "All right, that's enough." As Przinski continued to uh, yak on his way back. Here's Moreland. Moreland a single his first time up. And uh, that pitch will catch the plate and a strike on Moreland. Moreland trying to get it heated up. Tough times at the plate for him right now. And Gonzalez wants to keep it right there. Moreland's two for three in the only at bats he's had against Gonzalez. 0-1 delivery to him and a swing and a miss 0-2. Devastating split finger right there. I mean, and they all play off his fastball. We've seen fastballs getting blown by hitters, and then this wild swing like that, and the hitters just can't figure out what Miguel's going to throw. Moreland at 2.55, career hitter against the Orioles, couple of home runs, and will take the pitch up high. One ball, two strike count on him. Orioles are now 26 and 19 here at home as they get to finish up in the All Star break at Camden Yards against Toronto. 1 2 delivery and fouled right back. Now we've talked time and time again about Miguel Gonzalez's split finger, but believe it or not, he has over 50% of his strikeouts have come. Off his fastball, and it's really the effects, obviously, of his location. But being able to use his off-speed pitches consistently throughout counts, and that fastball just sneaks up by him, and he gets a lot of swing and misses. One-two delivery, and that'll be fouled the other way. Very tough to be a starting pitcher in the major leagues if you don't have a fastball you can locate. Oh my! It's Perhaps sure impossible. <laughs> Unless you got a knuckleball. Yeah. Certainly makes it tough. One and two on Mitch Moreland. Moreland. And he's got another one. Base hit to center. So Moreland's had the only hits for Texas 
two of them in the ballgame. On Sunday, the first 20,000 fans, 15 and over, will get the Orioles replica batting practice hat presented by DAP. And all kids 14 and under have the chance to bring their Major League dreams to life. They'll get to run the bases here at Camden Yards after the ball game against the Blue Jays. It's a 135 game. Get your tickets now at 888 bird to go to Orioles.com. So Moreland on again, one out this time. Profire grounded out his first time up. Erickson profire with Machado in at third. Fouls are back. Certainly have to be impressed with the rips he takes. He may be struggling at the plate, but he is aggressive. Yeah, he's not getting cheated. He has had just eight hits in his last 51 at bats. That's a batting average of a little under 160 over the last 16 games. 0 oh, 1 count, runner on, one down. Pro fire outside. He played against the Orioles last year in only one game, and that was in that wild card playoff game. Got a pinch hit single in his first postseason action. The Orioles, of course, winning that wild card playoff game against Texas last year. Well, it's really hard on young players and Pro Fire, obviously. One of the younger players in the league and you know the scouting reports get out there so quick now and, and hitters have to make adjustments like in a day's time and you know unfortunately right now he's going through a spot where he hasn't been able to make the adjustments on how he's getting pitched to and really that kind of stuff is what makes what Manny's doing so impressive I mean, for such a young player to continually go out there night in and night out and put up quality at bats and he has been getting pitched to very tough. I mean they're trying to get him out any way possible and he continues to have a solid consistent approach at the plate. Manny just turning 21 profile just 20. One ball two strike out. Gonzalez checking the runner at first base profile check swing. Gonzalez has got it makes the flip Davis is there. Runner down to second base and two away. Start your night of baseball tomorrow with the Mid Atlantic Sports Report on Masson, 5 to 6 30. You can join Rob Long, Dave Johnson, Mel Antonin. They'll recap this four game set against the Rangers, preview the Blue Jays series, and the guys will go beyond the beltway for the biggest headlines from around all of baseball. That's going to be tomorrow, 5 to 6 30. It's the Mid Atlantic Sports Report on Masson. Matt Wieters just went out to visit with Miguel Gonzalez. Give him a little bit of a breather. That was a beautiful play Miguel just made. To get the out. It would have been a tough play for Brian Roberts coming in. Moreland at second base for Murphy who flied out his first time up. The first runner in scoring position chance for Texas. And the pitch is a strike. Texas has gone 11 for 25 in the series. Good number. With runners in scoring position, they've stranded 15. And a lot of runners left on base. The Orioles have left 25. Profile got the runner moved up. Here's the 0-1 deliver, and that'll be away. 1-1. Hardy holding the runner at second. 1-1 one, one delivery. Came back inside on him. Murphy takes it. Murphy with a 2-1. and one. Just a bundle of energy up there at the plate. Or David Murphy. Good numbers here at Camden Yards. 324 in this ballpark. 2-1 pitch to him. And fouls it off. That Caught weeders, I think. Yeah, it did. Right up in that left shoulder area. He went down to get this, left himself fully exposed. Good fastball down in the zone, but ooh, off the back. No padding there. Man, tricep and then there's a lot. I was happy to have Dr. Bordick in the booth because we need 
We need the good doctor. Well, I was a kinesiology major. Thank I you, understand Jay. that. And that's why we use all that expertise as often as possible. The 2 2 delivery on the way. And Reeders goes up to get that one 3 and 2. Three, two, two down. Can you see all that you have anything to do with the stars like astronomy? Is it? Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Thank you so much. <laughs> Struggle on that final. <laughs> Three, two delivery, and that'll be fouled back. I think, though, you had one of the best teachers you could possibly have. Jordan? West Jordan. West Jordan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. West, a good friend of ours, a trainer at Maine, renowned nationally. Wes left us a few years ago, but a wonderful person. Sure great teacher. Three ball, two strike, count two down. And that's outside. Got away. So there's the first walk surrendered by Gonzalez. Two on, two down here in the fifth inning. Well, really, the first pitch that's gotten away from Miguel Gonzalez right there. You see his pitch total 71. This inning, a few more, 22 right now. Two on, two away. Leonis Martin coming up, a strikeout victim, one for seven. In this series, Martin uh, 286 in the month of July. It's pretty good numbers. And he will take the pitch up high for a ball. Uh, the first chance in this ball game for Texas, really, and first bear down moment for Gonzalez, who retired three in a row in innings one, three, and four. Still has given up only two hits, both by Moreland. He's out there at second with a couple of singles and the walk to Murphy at first. One oh delivery. Fooled him on that one one. Oh, there you go. I mean, after a base on balls and the first pitch for a ball with a fastball, nice job of slowing himself down, getting a breaking ball over for strike one right there. One ball, one strike out. Pretty good lead at second. Ground ball towards second base. Robert Temple. And Martinez retired. So no runs on one hit, no errors. Two are left on base, and the Orioles continue on top 2 nothing. In the final game of this four-game set, Gary Thorne and Mike Bordick here. We're talking about the great 
days of summer. Mike used to, he couldn't have a bike, so he had a stick and he rolled a wheel down the street. That was his enjoyment. It was tough. <laughs> tough growing up in Maine, huh? Not easy. You got to learn how to persevere <laughs> up there, that's for sure. All right, Chen last night and uh, tonight so far for Gonzalez. Yeah, pretty much the same stuff. Fastball command has been the key, certainly helping their secondary pitches. And Miguel Gonzalez has been able to locate his fastball both the lefties and righties, and he's had some really good innings. Matt Wader is going to pop that one back. So each team with a couple of hits. The Orioles, though, their hits have been home runs. Texas, two singles. Wader's a strikeout victim, his first time to the plate. Ross Wolf, their spot starter in this ball game for Darvish. Who was placed on the DL today by Texas? Second major league start and only his 38th major league appearance. 30 years old. Here's the 1 1 delivery to Wieters and an inside out foul ball. Those are count 1 and 2. Yeah, Wolf's really throwing the ball well aside from the two solo home runs. I mean, that's about it. He's been able to keep Soros' offense pretty much off balance. Able to really get any kind of rally going at all. So Davis and Roberts, the home run hitters for the Orioles. One two delivery to Weeders. Well, the game's completed by the American League East teams today. Interesting that uh, Boston has now won 57 games. Tampa Bay has won 53. The Orioles have already won 50. And with the win today by the Yankees, they too have won 50. Games. You get four teams with 50 wins in the East. Diving can't get it pro fire. That's a base hit. So Waiters on with a leadoff single here in the fifth inning. And it is the fifth. Time for our fifth inning a home run bonus for this inning only. Our Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. Gets $500 for any Orioles home run. Frank Wright. Has already won $800 tonight for your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. Play five card cash. Go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles to enter. And then note that this is the first time since division play was created in 94 with the three divisions that four teams in the same division have had 50 or more wins at the All-Star break. First time. Since 94, when the three divisions came into play. So the American League East loading up to its billing as the beast of the East. Yeah, definitely. And it is going to be an exciting second half for everybody in the East. Hardy with a runner on 1 0 delivery. JJ flied out his first time up, looking to Bobby Dickerson at third. Weeders over there at first base with that short lead being held by Moreland. Two o delivery. Hardy will take it. It is in there for a strike. Orioles now three and six for the month of July. They finished up 13 and 14 in July last year. It was their least productive month in the win category last year July and then had that roar and finish towards second base that'll be handled Andres oh my Andres pro fire Moreland major league double play right there a pretty uh, flashy play right there by Andres nice turn by pro far as well showing a little glove there on the end check it out check out the glove flip that's some pretty impressive control right there. Perfect feed to Profar on the move. Look at that chest high. Hmm. Elvis Andrews can play short, and Profar is trying to find out if he can play second. Pretty good right there. So Brian Roberts now two down, nobody on. Roberts a home run, his second of the year, leading off the third. Seven RBIs now. To give the Orioles the 2-0 lead after Davis had the first one. Yeah, here's 
Brian Roberts first at bat. He connects with an inside fastball. First home run since April 4th of 2011. He goes deep. And that ball will be chopped to second base. Profar gets in front of it and records the out. No runs, one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base. Good pitchers duel underway. Ross Wolf and for the Orioles, Miguel Gonzalez. As the Blue Jays come to town, it'll be Chris Tillman on the mound against Mark Burley. Our coverage on Masson HD begins at 6:30. O's Extra presented by Geico, followed by game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. Take a look. Looking ahead, Toronto Blue Jays 44-47 record. They've lost six of their last ten. Jose Reyes, 307 batting average though since coming back from the disabled list. Pretty good numbers there. Burley, Redmond, and Johnson probable starters for the Blue Jays. The last time the Orioles played the Blue Jays, of course, the Blue Jays were in the midst of that 11-game win streak. So a uh, different club coming in. Blue Jays lost today to Cleveland 4 2, so they may be uh, in town right now enjoying, hopefully, some fine food. At our Baltimore restaurants. Here's Ian Kensler. And that is taken for a strike. Kensler, an 0 for 2 in the ball game. Kensler, Andrus, Cruz. Tight game. Both teams with power, home runs. So uh, never enough runs. Gonzalez. It's been outstanding. Two singles off him, both by Moreland. One ball, one strikeout. He has walked one, struck out three. Ross Wolf, spot starter on the other side, walked one, struck out three. And we are in the sixth inning. Gonzalez's delivery, and that one lifted in the air to left field. McLeod going back at the wall, and goodbye home run. Ian Kensler delivers the long ball for Texas to make it a two to one game. Game full of solo home runs. Kinsler getting the Rangers a little bit closer. Take a look at this pitch just elevated top of the zone. Verizon Fios, the Exmo picks it up above the strike zone actually, and Kinsler goes up and get it, gets it. Kinsler's sixth career home run here at Camden Yards, his ninth of the year, and a two to one ball game. Or Miguel Gonzalez, his 14th home run surrendered on the season. And 12 of those have been hit by right handers. Here's Elvis Andrus. Andrus has struck out and flied out. And the pitch is a called strike. 0 and 2 on Andrus. Andrus with a 4 for 12 so far in this series against the Orioles. O2 delivery, and that will be up high. So 
So three home runs in the ball game. Two for the Orioles and one for the Rangers. One ball, two strike delivery to Andrus. And that's outside. Nobody in the lineup tonight had had a home run against Gonzalez, all with limited at bats, just one game. 2 2 delivery, and that's foul back. A good pitch down in the zone. See Andrus out front, just able to get a piece of that one. So this pitcher's duel becomes even tighter. Two ball, two strike delivery. Andrus reaching and fouling it away. Upstairs on that one down the right field side. Way up. Shirt sleeve crowd tonight. And a lot of orange. And a little help for Ross Wolf, the starter for Texas. Here's the 2 2 delivery. Andrus making it tough on Gonzalez, fighting off some pitches. Andrus says hit in this ball, this ballpark coming in 16 out of his last 19. 347 here at Camden Yards, his batting average. Two ball, two strike count. Gonzalez gets it in, Manny Machado cuts it off. Run away here in the sixth inning. And our PNC minor league report is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Yeah. Um, Orioles general manager Al, um, Dan Duquette picked up Alex Liddy from the Seattle Mariners and triple A with the Mariners Tacoma. Good numbers. 263 11 home runs 43 RBIs. But with Norfolk he's off to a great start 333 with a home run. He's got a double in there five RBIs in four games. So. Duquette adding more depth to the Orioles organization. She has done so much of and it's taking over the Orioles. Here is Nelson Cruz. He has grounded out and popped out. One away. Cruz with a big cut. Nelson Cruz talking in the Dallas newspapers today about going to the All-Star game with a bit of a cloud over him probably unfairly in the Biogenesis clinic scandal that's going on and major league players will be touched by it. His name has been linked to it. He has denied any involvement over and over and over again. And he said I'm going to go to New York in the all star game. I'm just going to enjoy it and have some fun. He said I've said I can't say anything a billion times. Why can't I say it again. I don't think it's going to be any different. He's been asked he's responded. No I'm not involved. The boy there are other major league players who got to be sweating bullets because looks like MLB after the all star break is going to name some names in that biogenesis investigation. One two delivery to Cruz that'll be outside. Two ball two strike count. Well they're definitely going to be aggressive. You know Major League Baseball obviously trying to clean up the sport. Um, they've done a lot of things obviously with the drug testing and and now when players are linked. You know, to performance enhancing drugs. They're doing what they can to stop. Larry Kegas will pick that one up. Cruz is on. So Texas, a couple of hits here in the sixth inning. All Maryland residents 21 and over are invited to visit Orioles.com slash plates for your chance to win the official Orioles Maryland license plate number 83. Plus an 83 World Series champions 30th anniversary floppy hat signed by MVP Rick Dempsey. Show your Birdland pride. Enter this unique prize package celebrating contest. Sweepstakes end tomorrow at midnight. Don't delay. Orioles.com slash plates. Beltre, dangerous situation here. Beltre, a Baltimore chop to short. Hardy, he'll go to Roberts. Over to first. A double play. Texas has hit now into 81 double plays. Second most in the American League. Only the Angels have hit into more. The home run in the inning by Kinsler has made it a one run ball game.
and yards. Chris Davis, the major league leader in home runs, hits his 34th. It's a solo shot. Brian Roberts, he hasn't hit one since April 2011 here at Camden Yards. It's another solo shot for the O's. Kinsler, he gets a solo shot off of Miguel Gonzalez to get the Rangers one more closer. It's a 2-1 ball game. Pretty good starting pitchers tonight. Ross Wolf, five innings pitch, just three hits. Two earned runs, both of those are solo home runs. And Miguel Gonzalez, six strong innings, just the one solo home run. Remember, Geico saving people money on more than just car insurance. Real good ball game here to wrap up this four game set and fouled off by Nolan Rimel. Rimel grounded out his only at bat. McLeod Machado at the top of the order for the Orioles. 2 3 0 for the O's, 1 4 0 for the Rangers. Orioles have left nobody on base. Three have been left on by Texas. A ball in the air, center field. Martin is over. One away in the sixth inning. Well, you've got to be impressed by the performance of Ross Wolf. Yeah, just 68 pitches. I mean, very impressive. I mean, like we had talked about earlier, pitching the contact. Not falling behind many hitters. Came on in relief against the Orioles on uh, Monday. 8 5 lead, 2 1, get out of it. Look at what's happened to the CRA with the injuries. When you lose four of five starters, which Texas has, that's what it's going to look like. Up, 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 up. Four and a half here in the month of July. Yeah, it's been tough, but if they keep getting spot starts like they're getting from Wolf tonight, I think they'll be in pretty good shape. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, trying to maneuver all of this. Two new members of the bullpen, as we mentioned earlier, were brought up for the ball game tonight. 2 0 count, Nate McLeod. McLeod has grounded out, lined out, and about to fly out. Martin's got it and there are two down. Well, we were talking about the spot starts that need to be made, but this Rangers bullpen is loaded with arms right now. There must be nine, ten guys out there in the bullpen. They're starting to get a little bit busy as Wolf has worked his way into the sixth inning here. Actually, pretty low pitch count, but they like his arm and they're going to probably need him soon. So Neil Koch, you saw him moving around the bullpen. Here's Manny Machado, and Manny will drive the ball right center field, going over Martinez gets there. Wow. Wolf gets the side retired on uh, three fly balls to center field. Three up, three down, six complete. Gonzalez, Wolf, the duel.
By 26, the Orioles opened a big three-game weekend series against the division-leading Red Sox. Help paint the park orange as the birds battle for that division leadership. Good seats remain, won't last. Make sure Oriole fans get there before the Red Sox fans do. Get your seats today, 888-848-BIRD, go to Orioles.com. One of the Red Hot Red Sox, David Ortiz, setting the all-time mark on their road trip last night for the most hits by a designated hitter. And look at the categories. He leads in as a DH. Hits, home runs, RBIs, runs, extra base hits. And he has played 79 fewer games than Harold Baines, the man he just bested for most hits as a DH. Yeah, pretty impressive numbers there for David Ortiz. Certainly a powerhouse in that Red Sox lineup. And, boy, he's going to go down in history now as one of the best DHs ever. And uh, he, like Edgar Martinez and Baines, both will push the issue of the Hall of Fame for DHs. Here's A.J. Przinski. Uh, Przinski down to first and foul. We go to the seventh inning. He is struck out and flied out. 279 with the eight home runs on the year. Two to one ball game here in the seventh inning. Pitchers have just dominated. Gonzalez up to 92 thrown in the game. Again, Pruszynski out in front of it fouls it off. Not sure many would have thought at this point, maybe, that Gonzalez and Chen would be the two steadiest pitchers. And I don't leave Tillman out because he's done a great job for them. But these two have just been phenomenal. Chen starting uh, off the DL last night, and the pitch will be taken up high. 0-2. So it's a great sign for this non rotation rotation the Buck Showalter and company have had to deal with for the first half of the season. But maybe this thing stabilizes. Tillman's performed very well. Scott Feldman on the left recently acquired, working in two games so far. One two pitch in the air the other way. McClough going over. And nice catch. In foul territory. Yeah, had to go a long way for that one. Nate McLeod, of course, we've talked about this Orioles defense time and time again. And when Nate McLeod came over, he really helped stabilize the defense as well last year. And look at how far he has to go for this one. And good play, good concentration as well. And I'm talking about defense Mercedes inside the numbers takes a look at the improvement in this Orioles defense 2010 2011 at 982 that's 19th in Major League Baseball last year they were way down but they improved at the end but this year best in all of baseball with the 991 fielding percentage and they certainly know how to take care of the baseball nothing overly flashy they the outs that are hit to them they make them they are a quality defensive team. Here is Mitch Moreland. Moreland has had two hits. Two of the four for the Rangers. Kinsler a home run. Nelson Cruz with a single the other two. The Orioles got the home run by Davis in the second inning. Major League leading 34th. And the home run by Roberts his second leading off the third inning. Those are the two runs the Orioles have. Kinsler's home run for Texas. Moreland at 264, lifetime hitter at the major league level. Grounds that one to first and a broken bat. It is foul. And he'll come back. Chris Davis with a long ball in this game for the Orioles. He and the O's happy to see that Ofer streak ended and the home run back, which the Orioles have used. During the season, the Orioles have been one or two in percentage of runs scored off of home runs. One ball, two strike count from Gonzalez. And Moreland will take the pitch down low for a ball, two and two. Now, well, if Chris Davis hasn't put up the home run numbers that he's put up this year, you know, I think the Orioles' offense would still be pretty much a good home run hitting team. They certainly wouldn't be leading the division. So the impact that Chris Davis has had 
on this total Orioles offense has been incredible and that's why he is midseason talks of league MVP right now. Yep. Strikeout number four. Take a look at the Verizon Fios Exmo here. He just challenges Moreland after a couple base hits challenging him with the fastball and gets it by him. So the Orioles bullpen with Gonzalez having reached 100 will get to work. Troy Patton the left hander up. Here is Yerickson Profire two down and nobody on Profire has grounded out twice. His average now down to 234 here in the series one hit in 10 at bats. Be a lot of talk in the All Star break, of course, about uh, Cabrera, whether or not he can win consecutive triple crowns, which would be amazing. He's leading the league in average in RBIs. Chris Davis leads in home runs. Cabrera's got 30. Davis has got 34. Chris has dropped an average down to 310. Cabrera hitting at 366. That's the largest differential the two of them have had this year because of that recent streak that Chris has gone through. So the average has dropped down. Chris still up there though, 85 RBIs coming into the game now, 86. Cabrera's got 94. 3 0 delivery to Profire. He's taking in. He's on. Two down and one on. Swing for the fences with a new home run derby mobile game with MMB.com. Play as the home run derby participant for the past three years when you're in the arcade mode or in derby mode that recreates the authentic home run derby tournament experience. Available iPhone, iPad. Download MLB.com's home run derby for free. So that will be it. Gonzalez coming out of the ball game leaves with the Orioles leading two to one and a chance for him to win. His seventh ball game, the left hander Patton will come on to face Murphy or a pinch hitter. We'll see. Gonzalez will get a hand. Gonzalez tonight for the Orioles. Another outstanding performance. Giving up only a couple of walks and picking up big strikeouts when he needed them. Sending uh, Pierzynski back talking to himself after one of the K's he got in the game. And for Gonzalez, he finish up with four strikeouts. Moreland here in the seventh inning. And take a look at Miguel's line. Six and two thirds right on cue from Miguel here recently. Four hits. This one earned run, a couple walks and four punch outs, 104 pitches to get to that point. And he is responsible for the runner at first. But another great outing for Miguel Gonzalez and really good back to back starts for the Orioles. 
Wei Yin Chen, and now Miguel Gonzalez and Chris Tillman hoping he can follow suit tomorrow. Troy Patton, the left hander, and Davis going over to get it. And take a look at Troy Patton on the year 3.82 earned run average, 25 strikeouts to 13 base on balls, 282 a point on average. Lefty sitting 279 and righties 284. Two down, runner at first base. David Murphy up and will take the pitch for a strike. Patton has appeared in the series, two thirds of an inning, a run on two hits. And Troy's actually pitched very well for the Orioles after about a month and a half since June 1st, just a 1.88 earned run average. And he'll get that one in there. Murphy didn't think so. And the count goes to two strikes. 12 out of 17, you see inherited, stranded. Patton has appeared in only three games now against the Rangers, just an inning and two thirds. They go a little bit further outside. And a ball and two strikes. Murphy, 223 off lefties, 222 off right handers. Profile with good speed on at first base, two outs. Big lead over there. One run ball game. Murphy again. Patton inviting him to swing at a pitch that's a little off the plate, and he declines two and two. Now certainly getting ahead is a key and now trying to expand the zone a little bit. Very tough on lefties as he has that cross body delivery. Tough to pick up the ball. 2 2 delivery on the way and that will bounce. So Texas will get the advantage as far as profile running is concerned. 3 2 2 down. The Orioles will leave Davis on the bag in order to cut that lead as much as possible. Late in the ball game, seventh inning, and only the one run differential. 3 2 delivery, profile off, and he got him. So Patton comes on, gets the strikeout, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Seventh inning stretch time, Camden Yards, Orioles up two to one. in the ball game and for both of these ball clubs now going to turn the ball game over to the bullpens. Now Ross Wolf though very impressive outing for him as he got the spot start with you Darvish going on the disabled list. Six strong innings just three hits two earned runs both of those solo shots one walk and three strikeouts only 72 pitches very pitch efficient. He gives way to Neil Cotts out of the Rangers bullpen. This will be his 24th game one point 09 earned run average, 31 strikeouts, nine base on balls. And he has been very effective. Look at that opponent batting average at 195. Lefty's 256. Righty's just 136 off him. He's a two pitch pitcher. He's got a pretty good four seam fastball. He can get up in the mid 90s to the cutter slider type pitch to go along with it. Another very hard pitch. 
15th appearance for Cots against the Orioles. He owns a 1 and 0 record, 0 1 in save situations. 12 and two thirds innings against the O's, a couple of runs on 11 hits. Two to one lead as the Orioles' bad bottom of the seventh inning. Marquez has walked and flied out. In at third base, Beltre and the pitch taken for a strike. Nick Marquez, 264 off the lefties, starting tonight. 0-1 delivery, and that'll be punched in the air to left field. Murphy, a long run in. Caught it in fair territory for the out. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Here's Adam Jones is hit into a field of choice and he is struck out. Orioles have actually been out hit in this ball game four to three. Orioles the Davis Roberts home run single by Weeders that's it. Home run by Kinsler singles by Cruz and two by Moreland. Fastball. Misses inside one ball one strike out. Adam Jones, 240 off lefties with four home runs. He'll foul that one back. And this one looks like it's going really right down to that final out. Yeah. I mean, both pitchers getting deep enough to where now their managers can do matchups if they want here late in the ball game. Because Buck wants to get to the back end of his bullpen in a hurry. That'll miss a little bit outside. Cots with that 109 ERA. He's got the fifth, fifth lowest ERA for relievers in the majors. Played by Profire. Jones is retired. And the pitchers continue to dominate the hitters in this ballgame. Two down, nobody on for Davis. Chris at 311 on the year now with that home run picked up in the second inning, and he will take the pitch for a strike. O'Day in the bullpen for the Orioles. Davis 255 off lefties, 338 coming in off righties. Now with 26 home runs off right handers, eight off left handers. And Cots gets ahead of him here, two strikes. And Davis goes down. So Cots comes on and shows you why. He's got some of the best numbers among relievers in the majors. This ball game remains a one run difference.
game. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Two outstanding starts for the Orioles last night coming off the DL Chen working a solid seven. A run on three hits with four strikeouts. Gonzalez tonight pitching six and two thirds. A run on four hits, four strikeouts, a couple of walks. And for tonight, Miguel Gonzalez a chance at a win. Yeah, a really good job. Now tonight retired the side in order in the first, third, and fourth. Retired five straight to start the game. And he retired eight straight from the second to the fifth inning. Another great performance by Miguel Gonzalez. And he has certainly stepped up for the Orioles. Been one of their most consistent starters. Well, the Orioles defense set to go back to work here with the home runs. Davis and Roberts giving them a two to one lead. It'll be Martin followed by Kensler and Andrus at the top of the order. Patton will stay on to work here. O'Day's ready to go against Kinsler. Leonis Martin leans out over the plate, watches it go by. Patton came on, got the final out in the seventh inning. Martin has an 0 for 2. Leonis Martin, 236 off left handers this year. Shows bunt. Tried to drop it down and missed it. 101. Patton with a 1 1 delivery to him. Taken. 2 and 1 just missed. Yeah, it did. Nice slider right at the bottom of the zone. Didn't get the call there, though. Looking to get the leadoff man on. Try and create an inning here in the eighth. Here's the 2 1. Ground ball towards the middle, and it's a base hit. So Martin found a way to get one through, and he's on a leadoff single here in the eighth inning. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Here are the candidates tonight. Chris Davis with a home run. Major League leading 34th. Brian Roberts getting his second home run of the season to give the Orioles the lead. And Miguel Gonzalez with his great start. Text in your vote. A, B, or C. 3, 1, 8, 2, 6. And the matchups continue. Kinsler at the top of the order. We'll have to face Darren O'Day when we come back. Orioles up 2-1. The Orioles, this will be his 43rd game of the year. Five wins on the season. 2.27 earned run average. 41 strikeouts in 39 and two-thirds innings. Opponent average at 226. Lefties at 316, but he's in here to face the righties. 169 batting average off Darren O'Day. So O'Day... With a runner on at first base. Try and get that ground ball. Kensler, a home run, sixth inning, his ninth of the year, one for three in the game. He's the DH. And hitting at the top of the order, Elvis Andrus waiting on deck. We are in the eighth inning. Orioles with a two to one lead. 
And for Kinsler, he has picked up two hits and three at bats against O'Day. Martin with outstanding speed on at first base. Take a look at Darren O'Day. Inherited runners stranded 12 of 17 at 71 percent for the O's. Nobody out in the eighth inning. And he threw it away. Down to second base goes Martin, and there's the effect of speed. He tried to make an exceptionally quick move and threw it away. And Martin had really extended his lead. And it was a good opportunity to get him. And this throw just right between the legs of Chris Davis. Unfortunate miscue right there to get the speedy Martin to second base. They're going to score that an error on Davis, and that's a fair call. As Chris had a chance, the glove was turned the wrong way, and yeah, he didn't did. have a chance to get it turned over, and the ball just scooted through. So the Orioles, only their 30th error of the year, could be costly here. Kensler, nobody out, runner at second base. And he will take the pitch inside for a ball. So Day really has to work hard now, and you get the middle of that order coming up for Texas. One oh count. Kensler just watching. He's waiting for a strike. Gets one there. One ball, one strike. Two managers doing the matchup jobs now. Trying to get it where they want it. So Buck Showalter, he was talking to Chris Davis at first base and backing him up a little bit. One ball, one strike delivery. Kensler waiting, fouls it back. Yeah, always moving, always positioning. Bobby Dickerson, the infield coach, and Buck Showalter aware of the infield positioning. They want Chris Davis as deep as possible, really afford himself the most range he can have. The ball getting to the outfield, so they'd like to, to get a little bit deeper there at first base. One to the count. Hardy moves in on Martin at second. Kensler puts it up in the air. Readers. No play. Kensler had a hit streak against the Orioles here at Camden Yards broken last night. 14 gamer. He's hit an eight of the now nine of the last ten here at Camden Yards. One ball, two strike come from O'Day. There is Martin on at second base. Orioles have a two to one lead. Rangers out hitting the O's five three in the ball game. Here's O'Day's one two delivery, and Kensler got fooled on it. Raiders looks the runner back and gets the out of first base on the strikeout. Beautiful pitch right there by Darren O'Day. Nice play by Matt Weeders to bounce out in front of the plate. Take a look at it here. A slider spins out into fair territory. Matt Weeders pouncing on it. See Martin has to freeze, get that out, and then Chris Davis comes out of the shoot wanting to throw as well. One of Buck Showalter's endearing questions. He said one of at least 12. Right as a catcher. Not have to catch the ball if first base is occupied and the runner can't go, but the first base is unoccupied and the strikeout, then you got to throw down. And a swing and a miss by Andrus. Got the out on that one on the bounce. And runner gets down to second and stays there. And you see Roberts now moving in. To keep him close. That's the potential tying run out there. Andrus 0 for 3, 4 for 13 in this series with an RBI. Here's the 0 1 delivery. That'll be outside.
One ball, one strike out. Outfield on Andrus moved in a little bit in center. Jones. One one delivery to him. And a miss outside, two and one. And a real good pitch. But a better take right there by Andrus. Nice slider that just sweeps across that outer edge. Andrus with a one for two off O'Day. Here's the look back. Nobody there. Two one delivery. Popped him up. Shortstop. Hardy. And he's got it. So a day, a couple of big outs on Kinsler and Andrus. Now we'll get Nelson Cruz with a runner at second two away. Yeah, that was a real crucial out right there. Obviously with the open base. Cruz hits very well here at Camden Yards. And he can be a little bit more careful, but not too careful because the dangerous Adrian Beltre waits behind Cruz. Cruz, a base hit, now has a seven game hit streak, including five hits in this series, five for 16. Two down. Orioles up by one inside the Cruz. Cruz a one for one the only time he has faced O'Day. Jason Fraser, Tanner Shepherds in the bullpen. And that one will be up and away. 2 0 count, two down. Lead off single by Martin moved up on the error. Davis charged with an error but O'Day trying to pick him up here and get the three outs and leave the runner. 2 0 delivery to Cruz and that will be there for a strike. And a beautiful front door slider from Darren O'Day. The 2 0 count here and you get a pitch that's starting at your kneecap and breaks back over on that inner third. Very good 2 0 pitch from Darren O'Day. Two ball, one strike delivery on the way to him and uh, held up. So the count goes to three and one. This is where someone like Cruz gets the great advantage of having a bell tray behind him. Not going to pitch around you, may not get a fat pitch, but they do not want to put you on with bell tray in the on deck circle. Here's a 3 1 delivery and Cruz and a great pitch by O'Day. 3 and 2. There it was. Great location with the slider. Saw a slider on the inside corner and that one just painted on the outside corner. Twenty one thousand eight hundred fifty seven two one eight five seven on their feet. Three two count two away runner off second Cruz bloops it in the air. Arcakis is there. Inning is over. Great job by O'Day. No runs, a hit, and an error, and a base runner left on at second. Bottom of the eighth. Goes up.
seven run lead as they bat in the bottom half of the eighth inning and we'll see the second reliever tonight for Texas. Yeah Jason uh, Fraser coming in. This will be his 35th game. Nice low earned run average of 2.49 29 strikeouts in just 25 and a third innings. And this veteran knows how to pitch. He's got three of them fastball splitter and a slider. Look at that opponent batting average holding them to 215. Lefty's just 143. The righty's a little bit better at 246. There is a light rain falling just started. Orioles with a two to one lead. Fraser will go up against Weeders Hardy and uh, Roberts do up here in the bottom half of the eighth inning it is a save situation at the moment. You know the Orioles Jim Johnson will be up in the bullpen for the O's. Weeders tonight a single and he is struck out hitting a 231. Matt's got a one for seven against Fraser. And he's going to have another one. That'll take a hop to the warning track in the wall. He'll make a turn, but he'll stay. Cruz will get it back in and a long single for Weeders to start the eighth inning. For every Orioles walk this season, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to support the Y of Central Maryland's fit and fun program. 227 walks, $11,350. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Hardy has fly down it into a double play. It's not raining. I'm just imagining things. It's raining harder. Pitch is taken up high for a ball. That's some big raindrops. Yes, they are. And they came in a hurry. One oh count. Alrighty, we'll take it. Box by Pierzynski. One ball, one strike count. Passing shower. <laughs> he said hoping. One ball one strike out on Hardy. Down the line left field Murphy over in the corner and it's foul. By just that much. Great pass right there by J.J. Hardy. And it almost hung on. Last night, Nolan Rimo did a home run that appeared to actually come back into fair territory. J.J. was hoping that one would just missed it down that left field line. Hardy's got one home run off Fraser in his career. He is two for eight. Orioles have seen a lot of Jason Fraser pitch with the Jays. One ball, two strike count, Weeders at first base. Thirty-five year old veteran reliever. Trying to keep the score right where it's at. One two delivery. That'll be popped up first base. Moreland in place. One down in the eighth. Ryan Roberts, one of the two home runs in the ball game. Roberts got his in the third inning, leading it off. His second of the season, one for two in the game. Roberts with a four for 12. Lifetime off Fraser. Fraser against the Orioles now has appeared in 56 games. Three and two mark. All in relief. 56 innings in 55 games coming into this one. Jim Johnson, the closer for the O's. All he'll have to do is start out with Beltray. 
Oh, mm -hmm. one count. And Fraser up high to him, one one. Orioles after their 51st win to remain five and a half games behind the Red Sox, who won their ball game today. Tampa Bay won their game, so the Orioles need the win to stay two behind the Rays, who are in second place. 1 1 delivery, fastball misses up high, 2 and 1. And Brian Roberts, he can work in at bat. Very good at discipline, disciplining his own strike zone. He'll make a pitcher work until he can get a pitch he can hit. Two one delivery to him. Roberts will foul that one down the other line. Two ball, two strike count. In an outstanding four game series for Ron Washington and Buck Walter. First meeting since the playoff game last year, the wild card playoff game. Texas getting that 8 5 win in the opener and 8 4 in game two. Orioles coming back last night to win at 6 1 and try and even it as they have a 2 1 lead here. And Roberts swings through it. So Fraser gets the strikeout, two down. Fraser just challenging Brian Roberts with a fastball up in the zone. Here it is, hit it if you can, and Brian just underneath it. And Nolan Reimold, he too has had a home run off Fraser. Reimold two for seven. DH 0 for two in the ball game tonight. Couple of hits, nine at bats in the series with a homer and three RBIs. Two away, bottom of the eighth. Towards the hole, off Beltre's glove into left field. Leaders goes down to second base. Rymold will pick up a single. Two on, two down. Nolan Reinhold with the uh, Super Bowl chop through the infield here. Takes that big hop off the dirt and then just shoots on by Beltrade. Barely gets a piece of it. So here's a, another big moment in the ball game in the bottom of the eighth. Nate McClouth is coming up. McClouth with runners at first and second, two down. He is 0 for 3. He's not had an at bat against Fraser. Base hit here, could put another one across. Outfield moves in a couple of steps. Leaders the lead runner. And that'll be up high for a ball. This is the Orioles first chance with a runner in scoring position tonight. They haven't left a runner on base. They have picked up the home runs. The walk to Marquegas got taken out on a throw him out strike him out double play. Single by Weeders taken out on a hardy double play. One ball one strike count. Each team with five hits in the game now. One one delivered. Fraser misses up high. That let up raining then all of a sudden. Somebody turn the faucet on. Two ball, one strike count. Runners off first and second base. McCloth will take it. It's in their first strike. Fraser evens it up, two and two. Both starters 
On the mark for this one, Gonzalez a chance to win his seventh. A run on four hits, six and two thirds, and Ross Wolf in the spot start gave up just two runs on three hits over six. Troy Patton out of the bullpen for the Orioles, third of an inning, one hit, one strikeout. A day coming on for him. Cots worked an inning, got all three he faced. Foul back. Now Fraser on the mound with a 2 2 count. Fraser been very aggressive with his fastball. Throughout this at bat. I think Nate McLeod would love for him to throw a ball here and that would allow Matt Wieters to be sent in motion on the full count and two outs. Two two delivery on the way. McLeod's going to get a base hit in the center field. Leaders will be waved to Martin up. Here's the long loop to the plate. Not in time. And McLeod delivers, and the Orioles have a three to one lead. Nate will get a single and an RBI. Trying to work that outside corner and Nate McLeod goes out and gets it. Look at that position. That is beautiful. Line drive up the middle. Martin picks it up. He thinks he's got a chance. He airmails it. Matt Wieters slides in safely and that ball while it's still in flight. Nate McLeod alertly hustling down into second base. 16th RBI of the season for McLeod. Now there are two more in scoring position for Manny Machado. Machado with two down. He's 0 for 3 in the ball game. All have been in the air. And he chant goes. That'll be in the seats foul. Now, Brian Mattis will join Jim Johnson. Should this not be a safe situation? This gym would not be in. These two runs would have to score to do that. And they could on a Machado base hit. Here's the 0 1 delivery. That'll be inside from Fraser. Leaders kicked it off with a single. He has scored two out base hit. By Reimold and then McLeod with a two out RBI single. That's the bottom half of the eighth inning so far for the Orioles. One delivery to him, Machado the other way foul. One and two. One ball, two strike delivery. Machado jumping on it will follow it back again. And Texas has a result of this inning just in case. Ortiz throwing in the bullpen with Nick Marquegas waiting on deck. 21 pitches thrown by Jason Fraser in this inning. One ball, two strike count will come again. Popped him up. Third base. Well trade there. And he got it. 
but a big hit. McLeod's getting an RBI single here in the eighth inning. The Orioles extending their lead. We go to the ninth inning. Jim Johnson will be on for the save. Baseball on Masson brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. Discover Ocean City, Maryland's free beach, great accommodations, and exciting dining and nightlife. Book your vacation at OCOcean.com. All star game coming up in New York next week. There are the all star jerseys. Davis will be there and be part of the home run derby. Hardy, another one of the starters for the Orioles. Machado will be in reserve. And Adam Jones will be starting in center. It's certainly an exciting time for the Orioles with all those all star appearances. Jim Johnson now in a relief. 30 saves on the year, 34 punch outs, 253 opponent average. It's the middle of the order. Adrian Beltre up. Beltre against Johnson, four for six. Beltre, Pierzynski, and Moreland are due up. The 0 1 delivery, and that's going to go to short and a base hit into left field. So Beltre is on a 13 game hit streak, his first hit of the ball game, and it brings the potential tying run to the plate in the person of A.J. Pierzynski. Each team now with six hits in the game. Pierzynski, a 3 for 10 off Johnson. Jim has not worked since the series with the Yankees. Last outing was on the seventh. A couple of strikeouts, innings pitched, and inning pitched. And a one strikeout. Actually looked really good when he picked up that save in New York. Great velocity on his fastball was getting up there at 96 miles an hour. Oh, and delivery on the way and a big cut 0 2. A really good change up right there from Jim Johnson. Take a look at the movement. Location is what's key, though, down in the zone. A real good pitch to get ahead of Krasinski. Jim is 1 and 1 for a record and 3 out of 4 in save opportunities. Lifetime against Texas. Krasinski, comebacker, Johnson, Hardy, Davis. The 82nd time they have hit into a double play this year, second only to the Angels, and a big one right there for Jim Johnson. Well, the key is getting ahead, and Jim Johnson, great location with this two seamer down and away, and then helps himself. Nice catch and throw, and you get it to J.J. Hardy, and the deal is done. On over to Davis. Big double play from Jim Johnson. Two down, ninth inning is Moreland. Oriole win here. They will split the four game series. Not done yet. Hands up, pitching there for a strike. 
Updating you in the voting with the AT&T player of the game, Miguel Gonzalez on top. Still time to text in your vote, A, B, or C, 31826. Results on the O's Extra Post Game Show. 0-1 delivery to Moreland. Moreland 0 for 2 off Jim Johnson. Jim after save 31. Which will be taken up high. And a two ball one strike count. Two one delivery. Inside three and one on Moreland. Three one delivery with two away and that'll be fouled off. So take it to the limit. Three and two. Two outs in the ninth. Jim after his 31st save. Joe Nathan of Texas and he are tied at 30. Rivera 29. Three two pitch. Second base. Base hit. Texas not going quietly. Two hits in the inning. Moreland gets on. And again, the potential tying run will come to the plate in the top of the ninth inning. Moreland red hot in this ball game. Three singles. That's a big one right there to keep them alive. And the youngster, Profire, will come to the plate. Erickson Profire, 0 for 2 in a walk. 1 for 10 in the series. One on, two down. Bye to him for a ball. The Orioles can hang on to the lead. Gonzalez gets the win. Pro fire fouls it off. And a one ball, one strike count. Rangers now with seven hits to the Orioles six, but the Orioles with a three to one lead. Down to first, fair ball. Davis has it on the line. Johnson covers, and the ball game is over. The Orioles split the four game series with Texas here in the ninth. No runs, two hits, no errors, one left on base. Gonzalez will get the win to go seven and three. Ross Wolf will take the loss. He is one and two, and Jim Johnson goes back on top in the American League with his 31st save. And the Orioles have their 51st win.